Hey YouTubers, what's up? It's yours truly, back to post actually a video response to my last video with the five questions that I had. Uh, I've seen a few of the responses that have already been uh, put out there which were absolutely great and this is kind of my two cents on those questions. So question number one was one negative thing about your collection. I don't really have a negative thing about my physical collection if you will besides getting close to running out of space but uh, the one negative thing about my vinyl collecting in general is as you guys have seen my old videos I'm definitely into a lot of different types of music different eras and all that good stuff and what happens is sometimes when I discover a new artist or a new genre I'll go through this short period of time where I'll have a negative feeling about towards my collection because I feel like there's this great new thing out there, there's, there's this awesome stuff out there and I don't have it in my collection and it'll make me feel like my collection is lacking sometimes I mean literally there's been some times where I've sat down and thought gosh is my collection any good is it you know I don't, I don't have this this and that is it any and when I you know when I snap out of it I realize no I got some really good stuff in there so uh, that's the one negative thing I guess that I ever experienced in my collection you know, I'm not one that gets down because I don't have a, a million dollars to buy every expensive album I want and all that. That doesn't, doesn't even come into play there. So, um, question number two, picture discs, do I like them or dislike them? I think most of you know the answer to that from other things that I've posted. I do not like picture discs. Or for that matter, I don't really like colored vinyl that much. Now, I don't dislike those to the point where I won't buy them because obviously I have picture disc and I have colored vinyl and I will get more in the future, but just in general, I, I don't like them, but especially on the picture disc side. And my reason why is when I first got into vinyl collecting, one of the main things that brought me in was the whole retro vintage aspect of it. The actual cover and the black vinyl drew me into buying vinyl. I bought that before I even had a record player. I was out buying covers, you know. So for me, it's kind of like the picture disc is somewhat of a modern day spin on that retro format. And if the thing that brought my love for vinyl started with the cover and the vinyl, and now you're going to take my cover and take my vinyl, and mesh it together to create this thing called a picture disc and then put it in a clear sleeve you're screwing with part of what brought my love <laughs> for vinyl to the forefront so I think that's where my negative vibe towards picture disc and, and a colored vinyl comes into play is it's it's taken away from one of the first things that produced my love for vinyl so but again I, I will buy it and I'm sure I'll be showing you stuff in the future that'll be Color. Matter of fact, I got a couple of good records just the other day that were both on colored vinyl that I'll be showing you in a few days. Uh, but anyway, moving to the next question, which I thought was a good one. I mean, I was really interested in it. I thought it was good in terms of I was really anxious to hear everyone's response to it. And it was, one, name one genre in a specific decade that I would not mind doing without. I narrowed it down to two. One's going to get to stay. The other one has to go. The one that was almost on the chocolate chopping block to go was 2000 to 2010 dance slash house music. That is just a, a genre that I do not get. And, and I've made efforts. I have a number of friends that like that kind of music. I've asked them to make CDs for me of stuff that they thought was the great stuff out there. I had them take me to clubs uh, to see if I can catch on to the vibe of what's going on with it. I just, I just cannot get a feel or get an understanding or connection with what people see in that music or hear in that music. So I only have maybe four or five pieces in my collection that's actually like house music. So that's a genre I could have easily let go, but that one got a pass and made it through because the genre that I am going to kick out, and I know I'm going to catch flack from this from some people, is 2000 to 2010 rap and hip-hop music that is one genre I do not mind just completely wiping off the table and let me explain why I kept uh, dance and techno music even though I only have five pieces of it 
2000, 2010 rap and hip hop that I would get rid of, I probably have 85 to 90 albums and CDs of music in that genre. But the thing about it and why I want to get rid of it, hip hop, when it really started to come to the forefront, you know, it was underground for quite some time, but really started coming to the forefront in the early 80s and then what it did into the early 90s, that to me was just the pure nature of what hip hop was supposed to be about. I mean, really it's kind of a beautiful thing when you really get down to it. You know, your Grandmaster Flash, your Run DMCs, your Dougie Fresh and the Get Fresh crew, your Curtis Blows, your KRS-1s, Boogie Down Production. I mean, truly what hip hop was supposed to be about. The crap that's out there today, I, I, do, I completely don't get it. And if anything, it seems to be a cancer on hip hop, where it's destroying what hip hop was truly meant to be. And, you know, hip hop was not supposed to be about how much money you have, how many big booty girls you can put in your video. It wasn't supposed to be about how fancy a car can you rent for a couple of days to make your video. You know, not supposed to be about how many, how many women you slept with. Uh, every line in your song was supposed to be about how big your rims were. I mean, I just have no respect for that genre as far as what it is today. From 2000, 2010, no respect whatsoever. Now, again, I have a lot of pieces. There are a bunch of individual artists that I respect. Um, you know, Missy Elliott, um, Ludacris, um, and a few others out there mainly because at least they're trying to be creative and do something beyond 500 of my friends in front of a camera holding up our gold chains. Okay, so I'll, I'll just I'll leave it at that. <laughs> I'll do, I, can, I can ramble on about that for quite some time. But that's, that's the decade and genre I would get out. Um, decade I would keep. It's way too easy to say 60s and 60 to 70 classic rock, but... I'm going to go with the genre that has given me the most joy in terms of my experiences with music in my lifetime. And that genre it would be 80s pop. You could probably even narrow it down from 84 to 88, that four or five years of pop music in there. There's no other music that brings a smile to my face more than that. You know, <laughs> to me, the 80s at that point with that music was one of the last periods of time where we experienced the true fun in music. I mean, you look back in the, the 60s, um, I mean, you, you had the free love and all that stuff that was going on, but that was also very much coupled with um, the rebellion against a lot of the, the tough things that were going on at that time. So there was that big conflict aspect inside of it. Today, there are a lot of great artists, but artists seem to be a lot more concerned with expressing their darker sides of their creativity these days so again a lot to me a lot of the fun has been taken out of a lot of music today but that that mid 80s that 80s category was just I mean just good fun time where you could look anyway dress anyway and just it was bubblegummy it was fun I, I, I like it so uh, I'm sure I'll catch a <laughs> a few few pops for that, but that's Decade I Love. Now, next question was, one to three people that I think epitomizes a rock star. A uh, fairly easy question for me, actually. Number one, Pete Townsend of The Who. Kind of The Who in general, but definitely Pete Townsend. Uh, I say that because that dude was punk rock before punk rock knew it was punk rock. I mean, when it comes to just the delivery their energy, I'm not going to say antics, but just the, that style of delivery with music on a guitar, no one was doing it the way that Pete did it when, when he came about. And I call him a rock star because you can go back and watch some of his best live performances. You could turn the volume off and you're still sitting there going, man, that, that's a freaking rock star right there. So that's why I choose Pete. Uh, second person, David Bowie. Um... I mean, between his career and all the great music he's produced and written, um, his persona, the characters that he's brought to the table, just all the theatrics that he's done, you know, the whole Ziggy Stardust thing and just everything along the line, 
he just always did stuff that made you lock your eyes on him. You know, if you liked him or not, you could not not watch him, and you couldn't not listen to him. Uh, he, 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 he demanded that. So, to me, epitomizes is a rock star. Uh, number one, this person's face should be actually cut out and put in every dictionary beside the term rock star to define what it was. And that is the one and only Freddie Mercury. The most, inc- I mean, absolute incredible rock star is the best way to put it. And I guess the easiest way to sum up what I see in Freddie Mercury is you've been to a concert before, we're down to the last five seconds of the song, and the band goes into that build-up mode, you know, where the guitar is just holding that one note over and over, and the drummer's like going crazy, the front man is out front with his hands up trying to pump the crowd up, and they're screaming and yelling, and then that last moment they go, dunno, and then the music fades out, and you know, lights go down, and the crowd's going crazy, blah, blah, blah. That moment... Freddie Mercury somehow figured out a way in his live performances to maintain that moment throughout his entire performance. There was never a letdown with him with that energy level to to, to make you feel like you were in that last four or five seconds of the song. And when you mix that with kind of the, uh, the theatrics that he brought from his gay lifestyle into his physical performance he just created this this person this rock star that was just from i mean absolutely bigger than life itself there i mean i'm getting goosebumps just talking about it i mean i don't know i don't know how else to put it um between all of that and even his vocal delivery every line he's saying he's saying it as if this is the last time i'm going to get a chance to sing a line in a song so i'm going to put as much muster and as much power behind this line as I possibly can, and every line came out of his mouth with that power, where it just it just hits you. And, and again, the, the guy is just everything that I think a rock star should be. If you go and watch Radio Gaga perform live at Live Aid, it'll sum up everything I just said. So uh, anyway, that's my three rock stars. Spent quite a bit of time on that. Make sure I don't run over here. So three artists I would bring back to life. I have three honorable mentions and one I'd like to actually bring back. Honorable mention number one, Sam Cooke. Left way too early, had a lot more great music that he could could brought to the table. Um, Michael Jackson, same thing. I, I don't think he would have necessarily made more music that would really do anything to lift up his status from where he already was. But I mean, fact of the matter is, he was the greatest entertainer of all times. I don't care how much you like him or don't like him. He was the greatest entertainer of all times. So how would you not want to have that person still alive? Uh, Hendrix, honorable mention as well, because, of course, I would have loved to give him more time. I mean, look what he did in just the, what, two or three years that he was here. I mean, imagine if he had a 10-year career. At the same time, bringing him back, would not want to destroy his legacy at all, too. So that's why I kind of put him as an honorable mention, kind of iffy. But the number one artist that I would want to bring back would be John Bonham from Led Zeppelin. Simply put, Led Zeppelin wouldn't have stopped. And if he would have had just 10, 10 more years, 15 more years on, on this planet, because I mean, he was young anyway, I mean, imagine that. 15 more years would have, would have meant, potentially, we could have been watching Led Zeppelin concerts you know, five years ago, ten years ago, with Bonham, with Plant, with Page. I mean, I would have liked to have seen that. Uh, I mean, Page and Plant are still around. Um, would there have been a Led Zeppelin Five? Would there have been an album called Led Zeppelin Six? What would have been on those albums? I mean, those are questions that I would love to have answered by having John Bonham come back and Led Zeppelin continue to move on from where they were when he passed away, which I think was in 1980, I believe, 79 or 80. But anyway, those are my answers to the questions. Uh, let me know what you guys think, and please post responses. I would love to hear more about what you, what your guys, how you feel, I should say, about these questions. Thanks. <laughs>